I'm done with Sony, I think this is the time I switched to Canon. No, actually, actually, I really like my Sony's. I'm, I'm sticking with Sony. I finally had it with Premiere Pro. I'm switching to Final Cut. Actually, I'm, I'm not switching to Final Cut. I'm going back to, back to Premiere Pro. Do you know what? I'm done with Sony. I'm switching to Nikon. <laughs> Said no one ever. Seriously though, I'm actually switching from Premiere Pro to DaVinci Resolve. Now, in the first couple of years of my career, I used Final Cut Pro. Um, and I loved it at the time. It was great for what I wanted it for. But then as soon as I tried Premiere Pro, absolutely loved it. The integration is great. Um, having After Effects and that kind of dynamic link and being able to put Photoshop layers and all that kind of thing as well in there. Um, it just really did it for me. And I've been using Premiere Pro ever since. Obviously the motion graphics support is great as well. Um, so yeah, I've always just been really comfortable with Premiere Pro. But after using the free version of Resolve for a little bit, I think I'm gonna switch over and I think you should too. And here's five reasons why. And I'm not gonna be slating Premiere Pro in this. Um, I don't think it's a bad software at all. In fact, I think it's really good. In my opinion, it's even worth the yearly fee. Um, it's made me a lot of money. And no matter what editing software you use at the moment, you're gonna be happy with it. And you should also take from this video that I'm definitely not an expert on DaVinci Resolve. I've just started editing full videos of it. So this is my opinion having started editing with it, um, having been a Premiere Pro user for quite some time. Okay, so this is the office slash YouTube studio now. Um, I've changed it a little bit and I'll put a picture of how it was above if I can find it. It's all a bit of a work on progress. These, this charging wall is gonna go over here somewhere. Um, but because of all that, it's a bit of a mess. So what we're gonna do is gonna tidy up this mess and then each part of the video is gonna be shot in a different part of the office with a different background just so I can experiment um, with some different backgrounds here in the studio. So this is the first setup. I quite like it. I've got the desk here, the bookcase in the background. I'm sort of positioned between the bookcase and the window here. I could even probably get a bit more zoomed in. Yeah, I quite like that. So the first reason I'm switching to DaVinci Resolve, and it's quite an obvious one, is price. Now, Premiere Pro does charge a subscription, so it's a yearly fee or a monthly fee. Um, and don't get me wrong, it's probably worth it, but this price can add up. Every year you're paying a few hundred dollars, a few hundred quid, um, just for the pleasure of using the software. Um, and while it's really good software and you get like Photoshop and Lightroom with the whole package, while competitors are charging just one fee, it's, it kind of makes me think that it's worth switching over just to pay that one fee and not have to keep paying the subscription fee. With DaVinci Resolve, you can actually get a free version with everything you actually need from an editing software. And then you can just pay for all the extra bits afterwards, but you only have to pay once and then you're set for life. I'm not normally one to make a decision on my business based on how cheap something is, but at the same time, if you're thinking about one cost versus lots of yearly costs over time, it's definitely gonna save you a bit of money there. By the way, if you are enjoying this video, hit the thumbs up button, helps on the algorithm, other people see it, I get the mood off, get to take the wife out on a date, it's good times for everyone. Okay, this is our second setup. I've got the desk in front of me, which is nice because I can easily show off products and stuff. Um, I've got my computer desk on the left and the bookcase on the right. Really easy to set this one up, so I'll definitely be using this one in the future. Okay, so the second reason why I'm switching to DaVinci Resolve is because it's got everything in one place. So obviously with Premiere Pro, um, you've got Premiere, the editing, then you've got After Effects for the effects. Um, and it's just having to do the dynamic link and having two softwares open and waiting for them to connect to each other. Um, and obviously then it slows down Premiere Pro because it's trying to link with After Effects. Um, so it's a whole thing. Whereas on DaVinci Resolve, it's all in one place. So you've got the Edit tab, you've got the Color tab, you've got Fusion, which is like your After Effects. You've got Fairlight, which does your audio, and it's just everything's in one place, which it just saves you from having that hassle of having multiple softwares to contend with all link linking up with each other. And with all this software and all these applications and subscription services and that kind of thing, you've probably got loads of usernames and passwords to remember. So you're probably using the same password for everything, or you're apparently like the majority of people, I don't know who does this, but apparently it's research, you're using 123456 as your actual password. Um, this can present all kinds of cybersecurity issues, so maybe you need a password manager. So I'm sure you've heard of NordVPN, and this is the same guys. NordPass is another product that they do, and it's a password manager and cybersecurity tool that can help put all your passwords in one place and help you keep safe online while you do it. And they're currently offering my audience exclusive deals plus one month free with the code SPICE or if you click the link down below in the description. 
Basically, you have one master password and you can log in and you can view all your passwords in one place, even storing them into little groups if you need to. Then every time you need to log in somewhere and fill out your username and password, NordPass can just use that information and do it for you. And obviously we've seen that before in different browsers and whatnot, but NordPass will actually work cross device and cross browser. We've all been there where Chrome's having a bad day and you've got to switch over to the old Edge just for a website or two. So um, yeah, NordPass will work for that. You can also store all your personal information like your address and your credit card information. And again, group these into little folders if you want to. And all of this information is stored securely and encrypted. So even NordPass don't have access to that information. So if you lose your master password, NordPass don't have access to it, so you ain't getting it back. And you guys, my audience can get an exclusive deal, plus one month free on a two year subscription with code SPICE, or by following the link down below in the description. Don't be like me though, and forget your master password the first time you log in. <laughs> okay, so this is probably my least favorite setup so far. I'm not a big fan of the door over there, or the wall over there, and the computer looks kind of awkward behind me. But we're here now, so we're gonna get into reason number three, and that is reliability. Um, now, Premiere Pro doesn't actually crash as much as it used to, at least in my experience. It's kind of what it's known for, but there are still a lot of bugs um, that really frustrate me. I'm currently using Premiere Pro 2021 and 2022 versions sort of simultaneously. And the reason for that is, at least on my M1 Max MacBook Pro, um, 2021 is more reliable, it's more efficient, it's quicker, um, 2022 seems to spark up the fans more um, on the MacBook Pro and the battery life lasts significantly less on Premiere Pro 2022. So I'm kind of using both, but editing on the free version of DaVinci Resolve so far has been just really smooth, really easy. I haven't come across any bugs and I'm sure there is some bugs, um, but I'm yet to find them yet. But it's just nice not to have to worry about things like that. This is not too bad. I've never actually shot at this angle before in the office. I feel like it does need a bit of depth of field, um, but I'm currently shooting on the 17 to 28 Tamron, which is only a 2.8, just so I can get the flexibility of changing locations and stuff like that. So moving on to reason number four, and that is color grading. Now in Premiere Pro, you do have that little tab with a few controls to grade your films, and I'm sure that's more than enough for most people, um, but it shouldn't come as a surprise to you that DaVinci Resolve has some of the best color grading tools out there. Now I'm not gonna pretend I know a lot about color grading. I'm the sort of person I'll slap a lot on change some settings, maybe some contrast, some highlights, some shadows, and hope for the best. Um, and I'm quite happy in that little bubble at the moment. But Resolve has the capabilities to do so much with color grading um, that I'm sure it would take me years to find. There's so many sliders to play with, so many tabs, things like masks that you can track, um, color picking, picking out skin tones, changing certain parts of the image, and using like nodes to do all of this. And there's so many things that, again, I'm sure it would take me a long time to find, but I'm hoping that Resolve will give me that kick that I need um, to try and dive into color grading a little bit more for some of the big, bigger projects that I do. By the way, if you're wondering why I have a random Fuji here, I'm just basically, every setup I'm doing, I'm just seeing how good it will be for like testing a product and showing a product on camera. So that's why I've just got a random camera just sitting in front of me for these shots. Okay, and now because I'm completely out of ideas, uh, I'm vlogging on the Sony ZV-1 with a wide angle lens on it. And we're gonna talk about reason number five, which is just the pure features uh, that DaVinci Resolve has. Um, I'm mainly talking about the Fusion tab, to be honest. So many things you can do in that tab, like camera tracking, object tracking, object removal, masking. Um, you can even like now on DaVinci Resolve 18, track like the material on clothes and add text to it. Um, and there's just so many different things that you could do with DaVinci Resolve straight out of that one bit of software that maybe you'd have to um, gone into After Effects for if you're using the Adobe sort of ecosystem. And the fact that you can get all this and just pay once um, and they'll just keep updating it and adding more and more stuff. I honestly think it's a no brainer. Okay, so now I'm back in my favorite setup. This is kind of why I set out the room, how it is. Got the bookcase here, the charging station's moving away. Um, so yeah, this is kind of my favorite little setup in this, in this room. Now, I'm definitely not ready to settle down to Resolve quite yet. I'm still using the free version. I'm still getting used to it. And it still takes me a while to edit a video, much longer than it would do with Premiere Pro. So at the moment, I'm just using Resolve to edit videos um, that I don't mind taking a little bit of time with or haven't got time constraints as such. And I think it's also gonna take me some time to get used to nodes. Um, nodes are basically Resolve's answer to layers and like different ways of editing and adding effects and things like that. Um, 
And I can already see just from using it for a short amount of time that nodes just make layers look like an ancient way of editing. Um, so I'm really looking forward to getting into those. But once I've built up a good knowledge and got myself a little bit quicker at the software, I can definitely see myself using Resolve primarily for YouTube videos and corporate content um, and any personal content as well. Um, I think this is gonna be my go-to for anything other than when I'm editing with other editors. So that's been it from me. Let me know if you're thinking of switching to DaVinci Resolve and what your reason is. Let me know what you think the best setup in the office has been today. If you like this video or it's been informative at all, hit the thumbs up button. If you wanna see more videos like this on filmmaking on the go, then do subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.